Okay, so you're calling the meeting to order at 7.03. Uh, Commissioner Dillard? Uh, present. Commissioner Gathawa? Present. Commissioner Harris? Commissioner Johnson? Here. Commissioner Krebs? Here. Commissioner Merritt? Present. Commissioner Nobis? Uh, Commissioner Rivera? Here. And Commissioner Traore? Here. Thank you. Awesome, so we'll get started with the reading of the Native American Land Acknowledgement, and I'll just go ahead and read that. It says, we meet today in the community of Iowa City, which now occupies the homelands of Native American nations, to whom we owe our commitment and dedication. The area of Iowa City was within the homelands of the Iowa, Meskwaki, and Sauk, and because history is complex and time goes far back beyond memory, we also acknowledge the ancient connections of many other indigenous peoples here. The history of broken treaties and forced removal that dispossessed indigenous peoples of their homelands was and is an act of colonization and genocide that we cannot erase. We implore the Iowa City community to commit to understanding and addressing these injustices as we work toward equity, restoration, and reparations. Um, we'll move next to the approval of the meeting minutes from October 6th, uh, but first I believe I will open up to public comment. First online, is there anyone online that would like to, to make comments? Anyone in the audience? Okay, Stephanie, can we get a roll call? Um, I think I have to make a motion to approve. Oh, yes. And, and so we'll need to second it. Is there a motion? All motion. I second. Thank you. Who was the second? I'm sorry. Lauren. Lauren, okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded to approve the meeting minutes from October 6, 2022. Uh, Commissioner Dillard? Yes. Commissioner Gathua? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Krebs? Yes. Merritt? Yes. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. And Commissioner Traore? Yes. Okay, motion passes 7-0. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, we'll move on to uh, item number five, public comment of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone on online that would like to comment in the public? I will move to people in the room with us right now. Okay, with that we'll move on to um, item number six. Um, so first we'll move to public discussion or public comment on vote on chair and vice chair for TRC. Is there anyone online that would like to make any comments on this item, agenda item? Okay, is there anyone in the public that would like to do the same? Okay, then I will open it up for discussion amongst us commissioners. This is uh, Commissioner Merritt. Um, after you know, thinking about uh, where we are with two new members and we have the proposal that we need to move towards the city council, um, I think that if the current vice chair who's acting chair um, would be okay with continuing this without actually official voting on a new vice chair and new chair until after um, the proposal has been approved by the city and ready to go to the next phase. And, and I would be willing to help, um, help facilitate things in the interim so that it's not all on your, <laughs> on your shoulders. But um, I, mean, I, I personally feel this for myself being new, still not in a comfortable position to vote for you know, the leaders of the group, but um, I think that it sounds like people have enough confidence in your abilities, people here in the commission, and I think that we can just keep going as things are until we get to the point of the proposal getting approved by the city. Anyone else have any thoughts? The question for you is do you feel like um, you need any sort of formal vice or ch person helping you out in kind of leadership at this point? Um, like, do you feel a strong desire for someone to fill these roles at this point? Um, I, 
I'm, I'm happy to do what's best for the commission. I think it would be easier to have um, both a chair and a vice chair just to m moving forward. But if uh, the commission feels that they would, we would rather collectively wait until after the proposal is um, you know, submitted, I can wait and adjust until then. Um, I would probably ask if anything comes up might reach out to different people for help if that is how we move forward so um kind of a non-answer <laughs> in between answer um i guess to be fair my preference would be to have it defined i don't need to be the chair but if i'm going to be acting in this role it'd be nice to have a second person so that's my thought anyone else have any thoughts on this, um, need to know if we're going to vote on this or, or table it, and so there, that would probably need to be a motion either way. One question that I have for you is would you, you know, at least for a temporary while, like next couple months, it had been floated, you know, last meeting that maybe we um, have these positions and reevaluate after a couple months anyway, is would you be willing to step into a vice chair position um, to like formally to help chastity? Yes, I would. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're going to, because technically Chastity is still vice chair. Right. And so we'd have to do separate votes for yeah. the chair yep. position yep. and Perfect. the chair position. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So I'm not putting the motion forward, but here's where my thought is, is that we do go ahead with a vote um, for a chair and separately a vice chair. Um, and, uh, and maybe we can put the stipulation that, you know, this will be um, through the end of the calendar year and we'll reevaluate in the new year. Quick question. Uh, just wondering, uh, Commissioner Johnson, uh, I was just wondering if you could uh, further explain why uh, you would like to wait, that's all. I think that, this is Commissioner Mayor, um, there's been a lot of change <laughs> that's happened in this short amount of time. And I think having some stability through the next couple months, which are going to be kind of crucial, especially with um, communication with the city council, um, having someone who's already acting as either you know, chair or vice chair, you know, um, I think it would be good, rather than potentially changing it to somebody else, um, just for continuity. And then it's going to be a short amount of time. January is going to be here before we know it. And I think um, that would be a you know, good. And it's one thing we talked about last meeting is that kind of doing a rotation. You know, so. I think come January, that would be a good time for a proper rotation. And um, so that was that's kind of my thoughts. Mm -hmm. This is Commissioner Gadua of because of uh, have been part of the changes that were there. The uh, Commissioner Lauren, this is more for me, it's more for you because you've expressed that you need a bit of time. But for me, I would have gone on with the agenda as it is said, yeah, yeah, because as the changes were happening from August 2 we were also talking and discussing about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to formally thank um, Commissioner Dillard for all of the work that she's put in as acting chair thus far and um, has certainly been, I think, um, a great leader for uh, this commission over the last couple of months. And I have a lot of confidence that um, she's the right choice for uh, the chair at this time, especially as we move into this next uh, transition where hopefully we can start making moves on um, a lot of the things that we've set ourselves out for. So um, I'd like to make a motion to um, vote on Chastity to be the chair until we reconvene about this issue. I'm going to second that. Yeah, I agree with that yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Are there discussion before we make a vote? Online? All right, Stephanie. And just to clarify, is this through December or is this indefinitely? Uh, uh, I, or 
I didn't specify for a date, um, and I trust that our leaders will allow this to be on the agenda in January. Um, okay. So I don't think okay. That we need I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Dillard. Is this something that I should vote on? Yeah. <laughs> you can vote for yourself. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Commissioner Gathawa. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Yes. Commissioner Krebs. Yes. Commissioner Merritt. Yes. Commissioner Rivera. Yes. And Commissioner Traore. Yes. Okay, motion passes 7-0. Congratulations, Chastity. Um, I just want to say thank you all for your vote of confidence, and I continually want to make sure this is collaborative because we've worked really hard and very excited for the two new people joining us to just move forward, so looking forward to that. And um, I want to add that you have been calling on us, and I want to continue if you need whatever you need, please call on us. We, we also know we even call each other at AMs if necessary. So, yeah. That's Commissioner Johnson. I, I feel like you've shown great leadership and I'm confident in what you do and I appreciate you and anything you need, just let me know. Thank you all. All right, so the next uh, thing is, are we voting on a vice chair? <laughs> or is anyone yeah. going to bring that all up, or yeah. do we want to table it? I, I mean, I, I certainly can put forward the motion, but um, I, in, in the few interactions that I've had with Commissioner Merritt, you know, I, I sense a lot of curiosity, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of energy, and a lot of willingness to help. And I think that's everything that um, I would hope uh, that you would have as a vice chair at this point. Um, and I apologize for not responding to the email correspondence that you had sent me last week. Um, I but forgive you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Look at the reconciliation process happening right before our eyes. Um, uh, and so, um, no, I, I just really appreciate your willingness to sort of follow up on things and, um, again, kind of stepping in and kind of giving your thoughts pretty frankly, but um, in, in a way that's um, open to discussion and um, consideration. And so um, I would be happy to um, make a motion formally uh, for Commissioner Merritt to serve as vice chair. I will second that. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. And I'm basing that on my interaction for the last two weeks with Commissioner Merritt. And I think we had some emails go back and she forth. She responded to my emails. <laughs> 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 okay. um, Commissioner Dillard? Yes. Commissioner Gathua? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Krebs? Yes. Commissioner Merritt? Yes. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. And Commissioner Traore? Yes. Okay, motion passes 7 0. Congratulations. Congrats. Okay, if there's nothing else on this, we'll move on to item, uh, agenda item number seven um, draft proposal for facilitator services. Um, we'll, we'll first open up public comment online. If anyone has anything they'd like to say, please raise your hand now. And while we're waiting, if there's anyone in the um, room right now that would like to say anything? Okay, well, we'll move on for discussion. Um, since we do have two new um, commissioners that uh, might have some questions they wanna ask, um, I guess I'll leave it up to you. Do you all want to hear from uh, two people in the, com in, the <laughs> in the room first, or did you wanna ask your questions? I, I first, this is Commissioner Lauren, or Merritt, whatever. <laughs> Um, I first would like to hear from them. Um, I sent an email, uh, so they kind of already have an idea of some of my concerns anyway, so I would like to hear from them first before okay. any more questions. Absolutely. I'll second that. Welcome, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, v Fix My Rise, SD Planning, and part of the local team. Uh, also joined by Annie Tucker um, with, uh, well, did you want to introduce yourself? Oh. I will. You will, okay. Um, and Angie Jordan uh, couldn't come here tonight, but we'll report back. We're a team. So, and um, we did communicate with some of our partners from out of state, Think Peace um, and uh, Kearns and West. And so uh, we will just kind of follow up with them. Um, they're just some extenuating circumstances, but um, if need be, I can make a phone call. So uh, if it comes to, comes to pass, I, I can do that. And uh, so essentially the proposal has not changed uh, since we last spoke, uh, but I really appreciate the email from Commissioner Merritt asking, you know, just some of those questions about like, you know, um, wanting to understand a little bit more about the scope 
and why it's a little bit sort of loose. And my response to that was really, um, you know, we've not done this before. And so I think we want to be as authentic and responsive as possible. So there are certain aspects that we know that we have to do. You know, there's um, some education that has to happen. <coughs> there's, you know, some truth telling that has to happen and uh, reconciliation that is going to be continually happening. Um, and so the way that the proposal is put together is we have our project partners who have expertise in that. And um, Think Peace and Kearns and West have both been doing this. They're around the world and in the United States. And so. Um, the education component, some of it has already happened too. Um, in the last, I don't know, 18 months or so, you know, both um, uh, Dave Ragland and um, Eduardo came and have spoken with uh, commissioners and gave kind of a little bit of a taste of what that looks like, and it was really enriching. And so I think that really it's gonna be kicking off with that education component and trying to understand and wrap our arms around. And when I say our, I really do mean that. Like we are here as your local partners um, to be, do this alongside you um, and making sure that you are informed and that you are also making you know decisions of your own volition and um, that you're involved in every step of the process that you want to be involved in. Um, myself and Angie Jordan are both trained um, strategic doing partners and so there is a component of that and that really is meant to once we have some of that educational component to start doing some of that work in the community um, in a way that is very asset oriented and talks about or and speaks to what every everybody here brings and how can we capitalize on that to really engage in our community you see two of us before and you know or before you now but really our community is so incredibly rich in partners and so i know that there are folks just waiting in the wings to really engage in this and i so i don't want to misrepresent our role our role is not to be all and all of local folks that are here to assist and be involved um, but we are here to help facilitate the um, kind of joining of that, the convening of that as well. Um, so, you know, kind of moving through education, uh, there is going to be the data collection aspect that Kearns and West is going to be doing, the fact finding. Um, and we have actually allocated another position that will be local person actually doing that because we have a wealth of individuals in our community and a wealth of data that's already here. So um, Kearns and West will kind of help usher that along. And they do have a lot of expertise doing that. And, and we need that data, right? I mean, we need to have some of the information from the police, from the hospitals, from the university, from the city. So there's information to be gathered for sure. Um, and then the truth telling, and I know that you were concerned about you know, re-traumatization and, and harm. And um, I think you know, from our perspective, that is deeply um, a, you know, something that we want to put out at, at the forefront and say, you know, how are we going to manage or reduce as much harm as possible. And so um, Think Peace and Kearns and West, but primarily Think Peace is going to be the ones handling that. And the way that they've talked about that is, um, you know, making sure that we're listening to folks, um, but we're not putting anybody on the spot. You know, that there's actually some, um, like, coaching or, you know, um, investigation and one-on-one and, and -on -one or, you know, gr small group um, activities to uh, make sure that people feel as comfortable as they possibly can, feel like there's a safer space with which to do that. Um, and so there's a lot of intention that goes into the truth-telling aspect of it because there are community you know, truth, like truth telling. I mean, that's that's going to be incredibly public. Um, and so, uh, and then I think what we are really looking forward to is having a phased approach that pro provides an opportunity for an assessment. So that's another reason why you kind of see it a little bit looser than you probably <laughs> were used to seeing proposals. But we have an opportunity to reflect. Um, and that kind of comes after a certain number of months, and we say, hey, where are we at? What have we done? What have we found out? How do we feel about moving forward, and what does that look like? Um, I think that's incredibly important because it sustains the movement, but it also really builds that trust that we're not really just ignoring somebody or leaving something behind because we don't have time. Um, you know, we're talking about 400 years of you know oppression and racism in this country we can't solve that overnight we can't begin to even in the next hundred years um, so 
you know, I mean, we can, we can begin to, but the realization of it really, you know, um, we just need to start lifting our foot to take that step. So that's the part that is really, um, you know, something that we bring to the table is that reflection part. As the local partners too, um, we are really wanting to bring forth uh, in conjunction with our native partners, um, these healing circles. And so you'll see that as part of, you know, our scope and making sure that we are uh, not appropriating any native practices. Uh, we wanted to uh, really foreground this work uh, with our native partners, and we've already experienced some of that. We actually had um, an ape come out from um, Sioux City, and uh, we had circles here in Iowa, um, Iowa City, and it was really <coughs> incredible and powerful, and um, the reconciliation, the healing parts of that is what we want to co-create and continue to provide in our community. Um, there's also opportunity to gather all of the information, kind of like halfway, and also do a presentation to city council. We want to make sure that we're communicating up, you know, what's happening, that they're not just kind of like hearing what's going on or watching what's happening, but that there's a collection of information that then gets channeled up to um, just make sure we have those communication channels open. Uh, and then in the end, really, those recommendations moving forward. And that is gonna be co-created obviously with you all, um, having gone through the process and um, at every step of the way, you know, it's really, are we reflecting? Are we, you know, working on this together? You know, what have we found? All of the things. So um, that's a real overview. I, I hope that I answered some of your questions <laughs> to the best of my ability, um, but that is really what we're trying to do is foreground a very local, authentic, uh, process moving at the speed of trust as much as possible. And I'll turn it over to Annie in case I miss anything or you wanted to add some things. Sure. And I should want to let them in first. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess I just wanted to, um, to emphasize a couple of things. One, the education piece is about you all getting educated together about what the process is. So the value of Think Peace and Kearns and West, as V said, um, is that they've done this. They've worked with people in different communities around the world and in this country and have experience with what kind of choices you have for process, what kind of choices you have for different parts about it. And they, through Think Peace, you will have access to folks in other communities who've done this. So. Part of it is that you are getting that education together at the same time and, and talking together and figuring out what you want. And as I see it, the partners, the local partners, the native partners, the further away partners, we are like your support team. We are here for you. We'll, we can do what you want, but we want to be sure that you get the information you need to work together to shape what you want to have happen and know why and know how you're proceeding because you've gotten the information you need. So i just like to really, that's, I think that's really important. And also um, about local partners, the, the, two new mem the two new commissioners may not know that the existing commissioners have done a lot of outreach to individuals and organizations, so have a sense of, um, at least from the original outreach, what interest there was in participating or being engaged in this process. So that's something you guys can talk further about. Um, yeah, and that the phase design is you guys assessing. Right, where are we, is this good? The other piece is um, this commission has already requested an extension from the city council and gotten it. So it's possible, one would think that it is possible for you all to, accept, to assess and say, you know what, we'd like to push out our termination deadline further and that that's something you guys can talk about and make that request. So that's part of what there is to decide on, too. I think that's basically what I would add. And we're definitely open for questions. And of course, you guys will be talking together as well. <laughs> Commissioner Merritt with questions. Right. <laughs> um, and 
I just want you to understand that I'm part of this is playing like a devil's advocate. So just get that on the board there. But um, so the proposal, there's how, how many entities or organizations? Is it, is it five? Four. There's four? Okay. So I want to make sure that so each of the four <coughs> has a local, I guess, contact. Um, as the point of contact person, person who knows Iowa City and can knows or at least has access to the history so that it can be more of a personal or personalized approach as opposed to applying something that's happened at a similar place but not exactly. So that's you know, one of the things I wanted to make sure that that was the case. Yeah, absolutely. So especially um, for our out of state partners. Uh, so Kearns and West does have that fact-finding person, and then as well, um, um, why am I blanking on their name? Uh, Think Peace. Thank you. It's like Truth and Reconciliation. Yeah, Think Peace also has identified a local partner in their scope that will be carrying out some of that work on the ground, um, and they're also in St. Louis, so it's really not that far. Or David Raglan is in St. Louis, so they've. Just not, it's not super far, is what I wanted to say. We share a border. <laughs> and both of them have come and visited yeah. in person, so they're invested in, in this process and um, have shown a very specific interest in, in being um, in the community as much as they can. But understand those concerns. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to add something. <clears throat> if you guys, if, if the commissioners think that you would like to have a liaison who's among you to different ones of the partners, you can create that, you know, I think. So that that's, uh, I th just candidly, sometimes I think the way this has gone is it sounds like the partners are gonna kind of be choreographing and telling you and telling you what to do. I actually don't see it that way, that we're an information resource and that you you get what you need to do what you want. And if you want to have one of you be assigned to each of the partners as a liaison to check in, go for it. I think that would be important. Just for transfer of communication, the transparency, all of that, I think that would be an important um, thing for the commission to do. So, yeah. Commissioner Merritt, I also wanted to add that uh, our local entities are working as one with the not local partners. So they're working as one facilitator slash consultant, yeah. 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 Commissioner Krebs here. I just have a question. This is kind of for everyone, I guess. Um, I'm wondering who we're serving? Are we serving community members? Are we serving in a more systemic way, maybe like working with the university? Or is it the fact finding that's exposing problem areas? Can anyone answer that? I'll, I'll give it a kind of my philosophy on this process. And when, um, so the, our commission, our truth of commission is, um, is, uh, not set up um, as a lot of other truth commissions have been set up in that we have a government mandate and they have uh, carried out very specific um, guidelines of what they would like for us, like to see from us. So fact finding, truth telling, and reconciliation processes. So we're kind of bound by a mandate, which is, as I've learned through this process, a pretty good thing. And so in a lot of ways, um, I see you know, our role as serving um, Serving the, serving the community through um, advising the city on the best way to hear truths um, and reach out to the most uh, minoritized members of our community, um, specifically those who are racially minoritized here. Um, and so through the process of uh, fact finding, one, I think that we are serving the community um, so that um, I think silenced and forgotten um, stories and truths are being put into public awareness and putting on public record, right? That's an important piece of 
of truth telling um, and, and fact finding. Um, and, uh, and then at the end of this whole process, when we are providing recommendations, we're gonna be using those truths um, to, a, to form our recommendations to the city about how it moves forward, um, uh, serving you know, equity for racially minoritized people. Um, so I certainly don't think that this commission is here to serve us, and we're certainly not here to serve the facilitators, um, but we are serving the public through a very formal mechanism that is the city of Iowa City. So essentially, are we creating like a template or a model for the city to use when situations arise? There's, there's, the, the sky's the limit in terms of what we actually end up recommending to them. Okay. Right? The recommendation. So maybe I'm jumping too far ahead. I, the, so I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a physician. I'm a diagnostician, um, and so I don't like making recommendations until I know the disease process that I'm treating, right? And, and so I think that when we think about some of the conditions that have afflicted our community, um, racial injustice, um, inequity, I, I don't want to make any recommendations or think about what recommendations that we're going to make until we hear what truths okay. we find. So through the process, we're going to flush out issues in the community. Okay. I want to add that it was formed through a resolution. So the mandate is to fact find what uh, Commissioner Rivera is saying, uh, ratio injustices experiences before making our recommendations. And there's a reconciliation piece and the other thing I want to go back to, we, uh, the city ended up uh, creating this resolution from the George Floyd protests that uh, ended up in our city and county. So they, uh, so they ended up, uh, uh, yeah, because of that, yeah, yeah. I say something? Yeah, I'll, I was just going to add, um, you know, it feels, I think, um, it can feel uh, untethered because you're having to trust a process that is also malleable. And so it requires, like, it requires so much of you. I mean, it requires vigilance. It requires compassion. It requires trust. Uh, and these aren't things that normal commissions do <laughs> it is not like usually within the government purview to talk about how your heart feels or what is your gut telling you but i think in this process that's probably going to be the thing that we really focus on the most um, so that may be why it feels as squishy as it does um, but know that you're not alone and that you know we will do everything that we can to make this process when we say successful it can mean so many things but that there are going to be you know it's not just the destination right it's not just the recommendations but it is about the recommendations because we do need change we need to make some things different than what they are so there's going to there's going to be that weight on those recommendations but it really is going to be process oriented in ways that are gonna feel uncomfortable, which is why the proposal looks the way it does. <laughs> that was a good answer, yeah. Uh, if I'm allowed, I'll add something for you, Commissioner Merritt. You talked about some things, having local people so that some things are not forgotten. A lot of us on this commission, we are part of that history including yourself mm -hmm. so yeah i just felt i needed to put that out there because you made me think yeah about that part of piece there's, of it there's a lot of history here. a lot of history yeah. we are aware of some of our relatives have taken part in being part of uh this this work of fighting racial injustice yeah so Yes, I have another question. <laughs> well, it's, it's not really a question, but it's just that because we talked about this commission being different than others because we are basically we're almost kind of stewards of the city council. Um, and in doing so, in trying to 
get some of the truths and the history that um, we have to be, and things are being public, we have to be careful on how certain public things are presented so that it doesn't form a, whether it's real or not, but a, a liability uh, for the city. You know, so I was wondering, making sure that, I think I mentioned in the email, it's like, how are the people going to be able to express their stories, and especially if it's in a public manner, because you want them not to be filtered, but you also have to remember that you know, we're representing the city of Iowa City and making sure that we're not going to cause damage for them as well in the process. So. Yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, there are certain um, methodologies for uh, truth telling or storytelling that maybe are less um, public you know, if it's written statement or if it's a one-on-one -on -one interview with, you know what I mean? Like, so, but I, I think that everybody is very like hypersensitive to making sure that we're not, you know, re-traumatizing or causing additional harm. Um, so I, I think that there are just certain methodologies that we will have to be very careful. I mean, like I said, it will ask you to be vigilant. It will ask all of us to be vigilant and uh, we'll make mistakes you know, harm will happen. And I think that really one of the things we should be talking about as soon as possible is how do we handle it when it does. So, yeah. Great. And um, so I've heard Eduardo say, talk about people having a private space to talk, you know, with one or two listeners. And um, what I haven't had is the opportunity to say, what do you do with that so that it's documented enough to carry weight, but it protects the privacy of someone who wants to make, retain their privacy? And I trust that, that, that any of us can ask that question as you guys are trying to choose how to proceed. He also, when he was talking about that, he talked about there being big front-facing speaking and that actually selecting people to do that, people who'd already in other settings express, told their story, told their truth, you know, and, um, and had a readiness to be in a bigger forum, but also somebody was doing the selecting, I think he was part of it, that's what I inferred, so that he could choose like what you have to say, what you're, you feel ready, and what you have to say will be powerful out there in the community. So I just want to say that the very beginning seeds of that kind of discussion have been had. Just the very beginning pointing to this is part of what there is to know. So I trust that with the time that you spend with them, they will be sharing that and you can ask any kinds of yeah, but, or what abouts, you know, um, and that they share the concerns. So there was something else, but it slipped my mind. I'm done. I'm <laughs> if, if I may, the, I'm just speaking for myself, and I don't know that I'm speaking for the team. I really see you all in, I think, I think it's wise to think of the city, but I think the heart of what you've been asked to do is the truth. So, but you'll, you'll determine your own common wisdom about that. But I just wanted to add that in. Yeah, one, one additional thing I'll say is um, because you are a commission that is um, with diversity on and the forefront, <laughs> uh, we also recognize that there will be trauma within the commission. And so we're also wanting to hold up that mirror for you as well and say, you know, you can step back and that's okay. We got this. You know, I, I just want to continually put that out there that as, you know, people of color, trans people, queer people, whoever, like we also need to be holding that at the forefront that um, you're doing the work and the work is being done on you as well. So as healing partners, that is 
part of what we want to offer. And you'll see that in the proposal. Commissioner Merritt, the piece I wanted to add is that because you're asking without hurting the city, being a city commission, we are bound by the parameters of the, the, the regulations and the things that, that uh, their boundaries, there's a scope, yeah. Um. I've worked with uh, many cities, and one good thing about like resolutions and stuff is they can be amended. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is a process, but <laughs> one of the things that it's not written in stone. So, as we're, and I'm sure as we go through this process, we're going to have to be going to the city to talk about maybe some of that. You know, question everything. <laughs> So oh, um, I'm going to, um, you all know that I'm planning on uh, making two motions. The first one will be on the draft proposal and then the second one will be on timeline for this commission, which I think is related to the draft proposal as it's outlined a timeline and currently um, our expiration date for the commission is uh, at the end of June of next year and that's simply not enough time for us to, to do the work that's outlined. Um, and so we'll have the opportunity. Um, to discuss more, but just to move things along, I'm just going to make a motion um, to recommend the draft proposal to uh, City Council um, for our facilitators. Your second? I will second that. Or oh, are you seconding? No, go ahead. Okay, I'll second that. So we do have the opportunity to discuss more if, we, if we'd like to, um, or we can move on to a vote. I do have just one, one comment. Um, I know that the city has set aside you know, money for this, and looking at the budget, um, I was wondering, has, I guess I'm looking ahead and thinking that there's a lot of opportunity for um, grants to apply for to help finance some of this. Um, it's laid out very well, actually, as. I've done grant writing and I was like, oh, this would be perfect. <laughs> so I want to make sure that um, in trying to help alleviate some of the expenses that there's always someone that's out there that's looking for grant opportunities to help um, finance so it's less of a burden on the tax dial, um, taxpayers and the city and that kind of thing. So, uh, Yeah, actually, we could add that. Um, this There's a section uh, for expectations of the city and commissioners, and I think adding that potentially for the expectation of the city would be where I would put that. Um, and also just want to point out that, like, our timeline is going to change because <laughs> we're already, you know, past date on starting. So anyway, I, I know you're going to make your recommendation, but just wanted to point out if it's okay for us to amend the mm -hmm. timeline on that given where we are in almost yeah. November. I'll amend my motion to include um, potential edits to this draft proposal that was in our agenda packet. One will be to include a line item about um, uh, expectations for the city to um, look for grants to fund some of these projects um, and activities, as well as just uh, um, adending or adjusting some of the timeline and dates that are included uh, for one that probably is more realistically going to start in January of 2023. I'm still seconding. Is there any discussion among us commissioners? Okay, then I guess we can move forward for a vote, Stephanie. Okay. And so how will the commission get the, the updated draft? Uh, how do you want to get it? Do, I, do we send it just to you or do we send, and you send it? Yeah, that would probably be best. I'm just taking notes here. <laughs> Would we still be able to vote on this tonight, Steph? Yeah, I think you can. My, my only friendly suggestion is the extension. M maybe waiting until you see the timeline that the um, facilitators lay out in the proposal. Because, I mean, that it's not really going to change anything. I, I mean, if you ask for it at this meeting or the next one, 
you know. Yeah, I, I, I the, the sense of um, making that recommendation now is, you know, a, as it currently stands, the TRC's lifeline does go until mm -hmm. the end of June, and if we're submitting a proposal that includes dates, then there should be a formal recommendation that goes along with that. Um, we can adhere to your recommendation. That would help us with so our current. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm projecting, yeah, extending our um, timeline to December, end of December 2023. And if you can make, th I think that what's listed in phase one, two, and three comes out to 11 or uh, 13 months. And so if you could squish that a little bit into 12 months from January to December of next year, that would be great. So just so, to clarify, we're putting all of those together for one vote right now? Is that what I'm understanding? So the two amendments to the, um, the, dr the proposal is one to include a line about grant um, grants, and then one will be to just um, edit the projected timelines um, to fit um, more of something that will be like January to December of 2023, um, and then we'll f we'll do another vote on that um, timeline. Um, on the t uh, timeline second. I have a comment about that. Um, I know that we want things to start January 1st, but the way the city works, that's probably not even realistic. Only because it, once it goes through here, it's got to go through the staff to see about what. Um, Areas that we are, they already have in uh, in place that could yeah. work but with this, and then even with the city approving it, there's the city attorney that's going to have to do contracts, and so I don't know if we Holidays. do it as a do it as a date or do more as like once we're ready to go, it's going to take this many months to do this, this many months to do this, this many months to do this, and then with that, it'll be pretty obvious that. That June is not going to work, you know. So it'll help with the the request from the city to extend the the commission, if that makes sense. Um, so what are you suggesting? Um, well, I mean, I, I would like to. Well, let me see here. So I think the the months that were on here were kind of based off of having a, that deadline date, which. I think we should personally don't think about the deadline, think yeah. about what is realistic in the number of months for phase one, the number of months it would take for phase two, number of months for phase three, so that when we present it to the city, I mean, they'll be able to figure out that once everything are ready to go, they can figure out, okay, how is this gonna go you know, with their fiscal year and everything, rather than, so rather than us giving them when the start date is, we just say, this is how long it's going to take for this phase to work. And this is how long it's going to take for this phase to work. Does oh, it totally makes sense. I just want to note that um, they, the city asked us to put dates. <laughs> so I agree. I, I think realistically, that is what happens. I think that if we put down a start date of um, you know February 2023 I think it gets to what you're saying when did they but ask for the dates by the way that in when we presented to them last August they I think. yeah in August they they were like this is too this is too loose so now you know what I mean like because that's really what we proposed was this is how many months it'll take you know and they were like when can you start and we were like when we're ready, when you're ready, we'll start, you know, but okay, it is, so. it is true that, you know, with contracting and honestly the holidays, let's be real, yeah. you know, like it's probably not going to actually start, start till maybe February to your point. But if we say January, then at least we can like have something in our contract to like, okay. you know what I mean? Like just to kind of get things like moving. Um, and then at, to your point, if, you know, we need to add more time. There's an addendum or something. You know, like yeah. we can do change. Con I guess you know what I mean? the city asked for so. dates. We'll give them dates then. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you know. Yeah. All right. And yeah, my, it's already um, squishy. My okay. so, my yeah. like tentative sort of say start date in January was just based on what we discussed at our last meeting. Which yeah. you know, mm -hmm. if we were able to get this proposal on uh, city council's desk by beginning of December, then um, they might be able to approve that and then start the process of putting out an RFP for um, some of the. Um, things included so yeah the personnel yeah yeah and Commissioner Merritt the I also want to add I don't want to uh, did that we had a what 
succession with the council and we thrashed out a lot of the questions with them and it's only that we had some concerns we had to deal with we have been ready to present it and we actually worked with the council to for them to ask all the questions and yeah on timeline they they, they sent this back to be to put the timeline yeah um so the only thing i would suggest um and maybe i'm misunderstanding if we're going to add an a recommendation to push back maybe we should move into 2024 um i don't think we should be trying to squish anything we should give us enough breathing time i would say maybe we do the end of 2024 and if we finish early we finish early but at least we have that time and if we need to be like a real like not a real commission a commission other commissions sorry that cycle out different members then that's what we would have to do in the future but it would give us the breathing time to do this because we've already talked about how this is not going to be done overnight or over a year or over five years so i agree with that uh, can i ask this you commission. guys um if we were to if we were as a commission going to say we're going to make a recommendation to city separate from this proposal that the this ad hoc commission go until the end of 2024 would that the way that you're kind of ide um, ideating this proposal change um change your timeline you know um, I'd have to ask our team on that we have gone round and round about the amount of time it is true we were trying to meet deadlines knowing that uh, we were probably going to go past them uh, because it's like reality <laughs> um, but I want to say that I, I, I want to say maybe a little but you know we don't we're very conscious of um, cost and so you know we don't want to say like now it's you know fifty thousand dollars more because we you know added another three months or you know what i mean like we don't want to get into that game of that um because we understand we understand the politics to be quite frank so um i don't want to change it too much if we did it may be a little bit um but i, I just i don't want the the budget to increase and so we've been trying to be very conscious of that yeah. um that's my thoughts on it obviously i, I want to you know bring it back to our team and make sure everybody else agrees with that um but we've had a lot of back and forth conversations about you know is this realistic do we have enough time and we've already extended what we originally knew was not enough time yeah. you know so we've already had that conversation so knowing that you're pushing it to 2024 First of all, really agree with that decision because you know if you're done early, you're done early. Awesome, but you know let's why why have this like deadline hanging over you that is maybe too too soon. Um, so d definitely support that, and then you know I, we can bring it back to our team and, and just know that w that's really the conversations that we've been having is trying to balance those things. Can I ask a clarifying question then for you, Chair? Um, when you say that we'd like to push back until the end of 2024, that specifically, and we'll, we'll make it explicit for the City Council, that we're extending the TRC to go until the end of 2024, but not necessarily hiring our facilitators on for that long, right? Yes. Um, thanks for that clarifying question. Just to give us that breathing room to continue whatever needs to be done um, it, but whatever is in the proposal should be done within the proposal. So what, and if that gives you more time, I'm not asking for extra time. So, so. Yeah, and I think that you know, we've also talked a lot about like what comes of those recommendations, maybe projects and programs that you all want to help for, you know, see, oversee and, and potentially even extend beyond 24. You know, Education. So. Education yeah. is a big mm -hmm. one. Yeah, yeah. This is Commissioner Johnson. I brought up before, and I'm, I'm curious to what you guys think about this. Why are we not pushing to have a permanent Truth and Reconciliation Commission? We talked about this before, and I believe, like, truth and reconciliation, we've already discussed, is going to take time, period. All we keep hearing is time, time. We're going to have to extend this and everything like that. There's no reason for us not to have a permanent Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It would just alleviate a lot of stress and the rotating chairs uh, that's perfect 
But we're never going to have a time in humanity where there's not going to need a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, that, I, that, to me, is unrealistic. There's always issues that are going on, and people are always going to need a voice, and we can be that voice, or whoever the next group is can be that voice. But to keep kicking the ball around, it seems like that's just a, a waste. Why are we not making that move? I would agree with you, Cliff, and I think what we need to do now is prove to the city with our recommendations that this is exactly what you're saying. I think we're still in the in the proof, the proving time of letting like showcasing like this is needs to be needs to happen. We all in this room understand what it's going to take, but there are more people that need convincing. So I think that could be part of our recommendations at the end of this, because um, I I wholeheartedly agree with you. I don't see how this could not continue, but it's not up to us. We can just make the re recommendation. So. I, I do remember you asking about that, and I think that should be part of the recommendation. But we're still very, well, we haven't even started yet. <laughs> Absolutely, I understand. Mm -hmm. I, I do like think that there's a lot of value in us actually putting a timeline on, on this commission. Um, one, because we've been created with specific agenda in, in mind, and if we want to, in our recommendations at the end of you know our time and our duties, um, say there there should be a commission that continues on these conversations, but with a completely different purview now that we know what we know, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of how I'm thinking about it. it. It doesn't necessarily need to be that this commission, at, with its current mandate, should go on forever because I don't think that it should. I think that we are the body that's creating a process, and then we can make a recommendation for an ongoing process later. I can understand that. I. I I just feel like uh, no matter what, uh, George Floyd's situation may have been worldwide that we all understood, but it, ha has, it, is, it happens almost every day, all the time. And I feel like we can always change, but still keep the uh, same truth and reconciliation because mm -hmm. That's what I mean. It's just, it's always this ongoing thing. As, as humans, we're constantly making mistakes and we're gonna constantly need people to champion that. So maybe, I mean, I just, I just feel like it, it needs to kind of stick, so. Yeah, I, I just wanna add, like, I agree with both of you. I, when I'm saying I see it in the future, I, I see it the way that Commissioner um, Rivera is saying and I see what you're saying, um, Commissioner Johnson, just how it's needed, but um, like Commissioner Rivera said, we need to do the diagnostics first to figure out what's needed and, and uh, maybe move forward in that realm. So, Commissioner Krebs here. So something that's become very clear that just kind of came to me is one of the reasons this work is problematic, we are essentially doing decolonization work within colonial structures. So we have a lot of this, right? So not only are we doing this huge, wonderful, amazing thing, we've got to make it work. We've got to mix oil and water. So we can't do this tomorrow. You guys have been doing this for two years, right? And it's gonna be, it's gonna take time. So when I came in tonight, I was like, we gotta push this through. I gotta, you know, be on board with these guys. They've been working so hard, but now I'm like, e. <laughs> <laughs> and I think in this situation where you have this and this, we're gonna have to find, we're gonna have to try to find some middle ground, and that's that's hard. <laughs> so. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out there. So I'm kind of in the middle. I don't want to push anything through. This is, we got to take some time. At the same time, I understand wanting timelines and wanting to push some stuff through, right? Let's get some work done. <laughs> so. I um, would like to know what you'd like to see finalized before we submit a proposal to the city. Um, I am ready to roll on this, but I also understand needing the time. So, I mean, I, I could vote on it today. 
I, th I think that you've created an elegant solution for us, which is to go forward with a vote on the proposal as it stands, and then we have a separate vote for the life of the TRC, and that can go well on beyond um, the proposed timeline that will be included in, um, in this proposal. Okay. Would you like to amend? Yeah, so I think that the, the, the um, motion as it currently stands is um, we're going to be recommending this proposal to City Council with um, two main edits, which is one include um, the, a grant piece as an um, expectation of the city, um, and then um, with a few modifications to the timeline as it's currently written and outlined um, to be within the same ballpark total range, but um, just adjusted to our actual start time or a more reasonable expected timeline. I will still second that. <laughs> there is no further discussion. We can go ahead with the vote. Okay, Commissioner Dillard? Yes. Commissioner Gathawa? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Krebs? Yes. Commissioner Merritt? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rivera? Yes. And Commissioner Treoy? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I hope I never have to do that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, you're going to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I'm so excited, you guys. Uh, thank you, everyone. If there's an... Oh. We'll make a second motion. Oh, is there? Yeah, there is a second motion, isn't there? Go ahead. Um, I'll make a second motion um, to extend the timeline of the Ad Hoc Truth and Reconciliation Commission until... Um, the end of 2024. I will second. Okay. If no further discussion, we will vote on that. Okay. Uh, Commissioner. Um, one sec. I just had uh, one thing. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Mohammed. Yeah. So, yeah, this is Mohammed. Um, so, my one question on this so the extension till the end of. Uh, did I just hear you say 2024 or was it 2023? 2024. And so the end of 2024. Okay, so this coming year and the year after that. Yes. And is it fiscal? Um, December 31st, 2024 is how I understood it. Yes. Calendar. Calendar year. Okay. So another two full years. Okay, so my one question on this is the requirements for being on the commission also include uh, having to have this area as your primary residence the entire time and you know i don't know about all of your plans and things of that nature but for me personally my vote is going to come down to whether i can say for sure that there's no way i'm going to move or have to step down and, um, in that period sorry to interrupt you muhammad go ahead um, yeah, I just wanted to include that uh, as well, because yeah, in terms of the total amount of time on the commission and the time I initially put towards it, I'm just not sure I can say right now, December 2024. And I think um, when we were talking about this, we, uh, we as we were discussing, we were saying if, if some people feel that they need to m remove themselves from the commission, that is totally fine, just like other commissions throughout Iowa City do operate. We're not expecting anyone to make a full commitment. Um, I can say I, I myself don't know what I'm going to be doing in 2024, so do not feel obligated at all. This is just to extend the life of the commission so that we are able to continue doing the work um, even after our proposal team. Um, helps us do the, the proposed work. So this Commissioner Merritt, so it's basically still a commission, nine seats, mm -hmm. and that's more what we're talking about. There's obviously going to be something that come up and the, the actual people may change, but the board, it, the commission itself is what we're talking about to extend right. to the... Yes. yes, just the commission itself, as uh, Commissioner Merritt uh, just said. Does that... Um, Answer your questions or um, alleviate any worries, Mohammed. Um, yeah, I guess I understood more on the on the clarification. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess uh, we'll just want to get clarity from council on things such as minimum number of people on the commission, et cetera, things like that. Mm -hmm. So other agencies don't come into play. Of course. But, yep, that's all I have. Awesome. Does anyone else have any questions about this um, motion? or want to discuss further? OK, 
Okay, Steph, could we please do a vote? Okay, uh, Commissioner Dillard? Yes. Commissioner Gathua? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Krebs? Yes. Commissioner Merritt? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rivera? Yes. And Commissioner Traore? Uh, I'm gonna abstain from this one. Motion passed 6601 abstention. Awesome. Um, we'll now move on to uh, commissioner announcements, um, but first we'll start with staff. I don't have anything, thank you. Awesome. Um, does anyone have any announcements? And just reminder, no one, we cannot speak to each other or interact during this time. Uh, this is Commissioner Johnson. Uh, Saturday, we got the state tournament. We've been working on it for quite some time. Uh, first time the state tournament has uh, been, if I remember, if I know correctly, uh, brought to Iowa City at all. And uh, boxing, state tournament, I should say. Uh, and first time we've had a state tournament in a long time, uh, as well as uh, Golden Gloves are right down, the, right down the road. We are looking to bring that here, that franchise here, to the city uh, within the next five months. So still on track as of right now. And if you are interested, come on out, check things out Saturday. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, because it's a two-day tournament. It'll be fun, and everybody's showing the best that they are and how hard they work, so that's all I have for right now. Oh, times, yeah. Uh, three o'clock, three o'clock and one o'clock. That's a thumbs up. Three o'clock and one o'clock on uh, Saturday and uh, Sunday. On uh, just want to mention again that October, is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. On November 5, together with the SINs I coordinate, NISA African Family Services, who serve survivors slash victims of domestic violence, who identify as African immigrants and refugees. On November 5, we shall have a joint event with African Student Association at the University of Iowa and have a discussion on domestic violence and continuing to prevent domestic violence. Uh, that's one item I had. And the last week on Monday, Hancha Theatre, the, the hosted Soweto Gospel Choir and their music. It's really reminding me of this work that we are doing of uh, fact finding on ratio, on racism, because their music is always to remind the world that music, African music, <coughs> was part of the tool that uh, black Africans used to fight apartheid in South Africa. So the one and a half hours spent on Hancha, for me it was both very sacred time, but also very triggering uh, because uh, uh, a country like my country of origin, Kenya, is still, even if we do have fly our flag as a republic, economically, and not just Kenya, but Africa, and also for people who are of African origin in the world, we are still very economically and culturally very oppressed uh, in the world uh, by the Western world. And that brings me to today. Today, Kenya is celebrating and remembering that 60 years ago, we got self-government from British colonialism. I yield. Anyone else? If not, I will uh, move to um, for a motion to adjourn. I motion to adjourn. Rivera, second. 
Thank you, everyone. Thank you.